Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chris here. In today's video, I thought I'd look at songwriting in Ableton. Let's get into it. So to give you a bit of a backstory on why I'm making this video, basically over the Christmas holidays, I was at Anderton's helping them film this Christmas video that they were doing. <laughs> ah! <are> we on now? <laughs> so whilst I was there, I was just having a small chat with Rabir about, you know, Ableton and production and stuff like that. And he was like, man, I would really love to see you do a video on how to set up Ableton for songwriting and production, kind of coming from a band perspective, you know. And I'm relatively familiar with his setup, like he's got a bunch of stuff and it's all great, but Ableton can also be a bit tricky to set up when you're trying to get into this whole writing process. So I'm just going to show you my method of how I like to set it up and how I try to make things as easy as possible for myself. So let's get into it. Okay, so where do we begin? The first place is templates. You gotta have a template if you wanna start making your life a bit smoother in Ableton. What is my template? Well, this. This is how Ableton opens up. I've got an audio and a MIDI track, pretty standard. I've got some plugins on the master, pretty standard. But uh, this isn't my main template. I just leave it like this so that when Ableton opens, it's quick. Don't have to stay waiting for my massive template to open. And I can just get into creating if I really want to. Or if I just want to load up an instrument on the MIDI track and have a jam, I can do that. But if I go into my templates, I can click on the CV production template. This is basically set up with some tracks and channels and stuff like that already pre-assigned. So it's just kind of saving me a bit of time in the creation process. And so here we are, we're in, this is my template. I've got it set up pretty basic. The majority of it, which I would say are all of these up till here are basically just VST instruments that I like to use with a nice preset I've chosen just so I can instantly have a bit of response. And then I have a couple of audio tracks set up for my synth and my guitar because those I end up using all the time as well as just a vocals and an auxiliary track because always need an auxiliary in the studio. So I'm just going to break these down from top to bottom. At the top we've got some audio, literally is what it says, just a bunch of audio tracks because you always need and then sometimes you'll see me grab these and just literally duplicate them two or three times just so I can start laying down all the samples and all of that stuff. But that's the first part of my template. Followed by that, I've got my electric guitar. This is running through my amp. I've got two mics set up on the guitar amp. So uh, even if I maybe won't use them all the time, a lot of the time I have this mic taking up the spot of the second mic I have on that. Say you've got two mics, one mic set up on your guitar amp, or maybe you have a DI. You know, I've got all this set up. So in one of these folders, I've got four electric guitars and they're all with a dynamic and a condenser. And obviously the channel is selected on both of these. You can see the channel I'm using for this microphone. And then I've got one just DI with Stark, which is kind of my go-to um, guitar amp simulator. But again, just saving me time so that I'm not creating a channel, renaming it, coloring it, putting in the plug and loading up my preset. Like that's like 10 clicks, bro. Who, who's got time for 10 clicks? So there you go. Quick and easy. I've got four guitar tracks ready to go on my DAI just in case I need it. Next, I've got these two CV kits. Now, actually, if I get on my push, I don't know how easy it's going to be to see this. Okay, I've just realized I haven't plugged it in. Okay, so as you see over here, Boom. It was a bit of a mission to get it plugged in, but this is basically one of the two kits I've created. It's just a bunch of kicks, a bunch of snares, hats, and percussion and random stuff. So I've just got two of these set up. I was kind of inspired by Timberland, if you've seen how he usually sets this up with a whole 64 pairs of drums. And that's just a quick way for me to have two drum kits that have a lot of options that I'm not really too stuck on the choices, but I can just go quickly into making beats, you know? So I would either have this set up or maybe like a superior drummer if I was doing something more acoustic, but yeah, that's that. Followed by that, we've got our bass section of the presets. We've got Trillion, the Moog, and Operator. Trillion is just my uh, real sounding... My real sounding bass. Followed by the Moog, which right now I think isn't a bass sound. I mean, maybe. But uh, there's that. And then Operator, the Ableton standard plugin I just use for my sub. Sounds great. Next on the list, we got Juno. 
Can't Live Without It. I'm using the Tel Juno plugin. Sounds great. Then we've got Triton. These are for my kind of old school sounds. I just always have the strings patch set up on it because I think it just sounds nostalgic. So there's that. Sounds great. Omnisphere, Yo Faithful. Right now it's just set up to the most kind of bland pad. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, if you need something to get you there. Again, I'm kind of using these in two methods. I'm using it as a quick preset that I can pull out when I'm making a song and I was like, oh, I need a pad. Okay, I'm going to go Juno and am I going to go Omnisphere? So that's quick. Or else I just need to open up Omnisphere and I don't want to wait 10 years for it to open. So I've just clicked that, changed the patch, work from there, you know. So that's great. Analog Lab. Again, another classic. It's got this kind of vintage 80s sound on it, but again, it's just there if I like it. If I don't like it, I'll go in, change up the preset, maybe find something new. Serum, we got the Thurman sound. Again, just these are these are sounds that I like to pull out when I'm making songs. You probably hear them if, if you check out my songs on Spotify. But yeah, so just, you know, just again, sounds to bring out quickly and easily, or if I just need Serum, it's there. By the looks of it, it's got a little RC20 going on to add just a bit of movement and a little bit of shaping. Followed by that is my two go-to piano samples. So I've got the Labs, the free one, classic. Or else my, I would, what I would call my main go-to, which is this Hammers and Waves, and it sounds unbelievable. It's so good. And it's got this, uh, you can shift here, the, the actual sound. And I've got all of these MIDI mapped on my keyboard here. So if I want to add like some swarm or some fractals or just change the shift the sound. But it's all there, you know, at my fingertips. I feel like the main point I'm trying to get at is just have it set up so you're doing as little clicking as possible. When you're recording a song or you're writing a song, the last thing you want to be worrying about is, oh, you know, why is this taking so long to load? Or like, oh, I've had this idea, but now in the 10 minutes it's taken me to get to this point i've forgotten the idea so it's good to be quick good to be set up and prepared you know and that's kind of the main idea behind at least this template that i've got so followed by that keyscape got some electric whirly sounds fantastic organ and again this is kind of pre-set up in my template so that i can use the faders on my midi keyboard as the drawbar controls sick next is a blank simpler channel because you never know if you're going to be making something into a kind of sampled instrument or if you're going to resample something you've created in the track so i just like to have that there so it's ready so next is my reface folder this is just audio tracks again all set up and named to reface because i have the yamaha cs Yes, the Yamaha CS, the white little keyboard, which is actually, oh, let's get this, which is actually directly plugged into my MIDI keyboard. So if I turn up the volume, it's just always on. Right now on the craziest sounding patch, but uh, it's because it's smothered in reverb. So if I take off the reverb, open up the filter, get rid of any modulation. Then I can control it. And you're in. <laughs> then I've got my auxiliary, literally same concept, it's just folder with audio tracks for uh, this bad boy. Kind of see that coming up. So then last but not least, I've got the vocals. This is a very special folder because not only is this just vocal tracks, but we've got the whole vocal setup recording thing in here, right? So what do I mean by this? So when I'm recording vocals, personally, I have a specific method that I use that some people might also use, but my personal favorite way to record vocals in Ableton is that I've got this vocal record track. You record everything in this track and then you have a lead vocal track, which should actually be on there. And then I record the segment, I drag it down, paste it into the below track and then on this lead vocal i've just got a bit of processing that i like to keep there so again i'm not like having to throw these plugins on every time and the best bit about doing it this way is that this vocal record track has 
takes, right? So you can you can comp takes in here. Why I find that convenient is because most of the time you don't really have time to do the actual comping during the session. So what I like about this is that if we're working on some vocals and I like a section, I can quickly drag it down or mute it if I don't like it. But say I get back home and I've realized, oh, maybe that take wasn't the best one I could have chosen. I can go into my takes folder of my Vox record track, which would be under here, but right now it has none. So they'll all line up in here and I can just go fishing for a better take, you know, if need be. And same thing, I've obviously got some vocal double tracks set up in here if I need them. And then my BVs, same thing, but I just like to have a separate folder for the takes to live in. So they'll all live in here and then the BVs will go in here and no processing, but they're all panned and they have a filter on them just to remove all the low end. But that's, that's about it in terms of my template. That's kind of just the part about acting quickly and getting your ideas on the table as quickly as possible. Because one thing I find with Ableton, and this is with any DAW really, it can be a bit tedious when you want to get an idea out and you're just stuck trying to handle the software. It's like, oh, I want to record this take, but I can't understand why my guitar isn't coming up on the channel. You know, these are the things where producers will suffer the most and in a session when you're working with an artist they don't want to be there waiting around for you to figure out why you're not getting sound out of a microphone they want to come into the studio and just work so it's just really good to be prepared apart from the kind of having your template set up i think it's really good to understand the idea of grouping so say in this case where i've got my group my vocals grouped i've got my auxiliaries grouped so besides holding all of the tracks in the same place it's also rooting the audio into that track. In this case, all of my vocals are going into this vocal group. If I put any plugins on this, say a reverb or whatever it may be, it will affect all of those vocals. So that's something you should bear in mind when you're grouping stuff. Personally, I don't like to have plugins on the master master uh, groups. So say this folder of vocals. I would rather do that on something like drums. Most of the time, this audio folder actually becomes the drum folder because it's just all samples. Then I'll do that and maybe I'll put some compression and stuff on it, but it's more, I like to keep all the processing separate so that I can export it as stems later and it's not as big a pain in the ass. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically the idea for today is just kind of easily being able to songwrite in Ableton without getting too caught up on the nitty gritty and all the finicky, you know, details. If you like this video, I do other videos where I run through plugins and Ableton tutorials. I do a couple of live streams, but we're taking a small break, but we'll get back into it. Please feel free to subscribe, leave a comment. I do plenty of these videos at least once a week. There's a new video, so subscribe to see that. And I've been Chris Vela, and I'll catch you on the next one.